Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. A couple of days without videos, I apologise, don't crucify me. Um, but it's time for another episode of the CFC q and It's been gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, I, I just forgot all about it, to be honest. It slipped my mind, it slipped my mind that I had a Twitter account, at CFCQA118, which you could follow and uh, ask questions on. Um, it just completely slipped my mind. So we're getting right back into this way of things. Questions have been sent in for this week's episode. A couple of topical uh, things have passed since the last time we've done one of these and a lot of the things I've already priorly discussed on my channel through the Leipzig game, through the performances against Hearts. Um, and, and now we're in an international break. We've got time to kind of sit down and, and look over the last few weeks as Celtic fans and get ready for the next stage of the season. So if you do enjoy the video, you know what to do. Uh, like below, it would be greatly appreciated. But let's stop wasting time and uh, get right into the first question of the CFC QA. First question comes from Jack Kelly, who asks, judging, against, uh, judging the result against Leipzig, do you think we can qualify for the last 32 of the Europa League only needing... Four points if Salzburg beat Leipzig in Germany. It's going to be, you know, down to the wire. There's uh, no denying that. It's going to be a, a fight, a scrap to see who gets through to the last 32. Now, we've landed ourselves in a position where we can qualify. Um, goal difference isn't exactly in our favour. Um, and the fixtures aren't exactly in our favour. I'm confident we can get through. We've got two winnable games. Uh, Rosenborg away, we've done it before, um, they have yet to beat us with Brendan Rodgers in charge after four or five attempts even, and uh, that's a winnable game, away from, no matter, uh, you know, it is away from home, but it's a game we know we can win if we play anywhere near the level that we uh, played Leipzig at, Salzburg though will be a difficult game, they are one of the teams who, simply said, have been very good against us in Europe, one of the better teams I've ever seen play against us in Europe, um, in recent years, uh, they annihilated us, I, I know we got an early lead, but they were much better than us over in Austria, and we need to hope for that same level of performance once again at Parkhead, when we do play them, which I'm confident we can get, I'm confident we can take six points, but the fixtures being against our favours, the fact that Leipzig and Salzburg, what are they going to get up to, to make sure that both of them can qualify, uh, I'm not one for usually suggesting, you know, match fixing and using these kind of excuses and these ways out um, if Celtic fail to qualify, but you never know. It's not going to be easy. I hope we can qualify. I'm optimistic we can qualify, um, but I, by no means is it a done deal. There's still a lot to do and we need to perform at the highest level in these two games and score as many goals as possible in the process. Salzburg are flying in this group. They're going to be hard to beat at Parkhead. It comes down to that game... Um, more over the away game, which is surprising to say, um, but it is, and uh, can we qualify? Yes, we can, will we qualify? We'll just need to wait and see, honestly, it's one of the questions that I just don't really have a confident answer in. If you could bring anyone into Celtic right now, realistically, who would you bring in and why, says Lewis. Um, realistically, added in there very smartly, because I could have easily went out of my way to say someone like Marco Royce or Cristiano Ronaldo, but... Um, but realistically, you know, we need to bring in a right back. That is it. I would take really anybody at this point, from Stephen O'Donnell to Joshua Kimmich. <laughs> I know there's a very, very uh, fine line of realism somewhere in between those two players. Um, but honestly, a right back, because Lustig's shite. Simply said. Proves it time and time again. Um, off the top of my head, there's not any right backs who spring into mind because once again, Celtic are a club who usually find players that I have never heard of and turn them into good players. Um, we don't usually sign anyone of a reputation that is even above, you know, kind of mid-table Premier League because we can't afford the wages of these players. So if we bring in anyone at the right back position who is even a mere improvement on Mikael Wustig, I'm confident we can uh, go and win the Champions League. <laughs> I'm joking, but we need a right back. That's it. Realistically, right back is what we need to sign. God knows who it can and would be, um, but any right back, honestly, I would take at this point. Kai Chalmers asking, do you think we should sign Benkovic on a permanent deal? Yes, of course, I think we should. It's not going to happen, though. Um, never in a million years is going to happen. Leicester have just paid 12 million quid for the guy. Um, he is also performing very well at Celtic, which is going to make Leicester think, eh, we've got a bargain here. And they're not going to sell him to Celtic for any less than the likes of 20, 25 million pounds. Um, so they could make reasonable profit. Because Leicester need them, in honesty. They've got one decent centre half, and that's Harry Maguire. The rest of the team and the rest of the defenders aren't up to scratch so far this season. 
Um, they haven't been great. Benkovic will be a great addition to their squad whenever they choose to take him back, whether that be in January or the end of the season. Hopefully the end of the season for our sake. Um, I'd love to sign him permanently, but it's not going to happen. Matthew Glenn says, should Scott Bain be the main goalkeeper over Craig Gordon? I've answered this question through multiple videos before and I've given my opinions when I'm choosing my team selection for the big games in Europe and such and I would say simply no. Um, I know a lot of people are big fans of Scott Bain and I myself, because I'm myself a fan of Scott Bain, I think he's a cracking keeper. There's no denying that, he's a good goalkeeper. Um, but Craig Gordon has the experience, the quality and really everything else to still be our first choice keeper. His distribution's fucking dreadful, all right? Well, can be honest with that. I've said it too many times in the channel, it's abysmal. But the main job for a goalkeeper for me is what to do between the sticks and there are not many better that Celtic could get right now because he's an incredible shot stopper and that is why I would keep him at number one. Until the signs start to show that he is incapable of being the number one goalkeeper, I'm a big fan of God though and I'd keep him in between the sticks for now. Adam Mitchell asks, what will happen when Celtic next go to Timecastle? New, uh, new, I was about to say Newcastle there because I said Castle. Uh, hearts are showing the signs now of slowing down a bit losing that cutting edge, losing that bit of form and yes their team has been ridiculed with injuries and that could be one of the main reasons, it probably is the main reason for that, but we have picked them apart two games in a row now, 3-0 and 5-0, we have embarrassed them, we have scanted them, uh, at Tyne Castle though uh, we know what happens, we always go there and we're presented with a tough challenge, it's never an easy game when we go to Tyne Castle, especially since Craig Levine has taken charge of Hearts, uh, they beat us at the start of the season there they are still a, a, a decent team. Obviously, after the international break, we'll get more of an insight as to how they will recover from their back-to-back -back losses in the league. Obviously, losing to Kilmarnock um, the, the, the past week. So, you know, Hearts are in a sticky situation for now. We have now uh, took our place back at the top of the table, which is lovely to see. Next time we go to Tyne Castle, um, we need to look at the recent form heading into it. But I am confident we can go there and get a bit of revenge for the start of the season. I'm confident we can get a win after how we managed to perform in the last two occasions against them. Um, so I'm confident we can go to Tyne Castle and win. I don't think it'll be anything like the 5-0 and the 3-0 where we completely and utterly dominate them uh, and we embarrass them. Um, I don't think it'll be like that because they're a tougher challenge and in front of their crowd they really do put in a, a decent performance. But I'm confident we could go to Tyne Castle the next time we have to and pick up the three points. Back on to Mikael Lustig um, and John John Craney asks, do you think Lustig is suited at a centre-back position or would you get rid of him? I personally love the big guy and I love what he's done for the club. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinion of the big man. I agree with that second half of what you said wholeheartedly. Uh, wholeheartedly. Um, I love him. I love everything he's done for the club. I love the passion he shows when he puts on the Celtic shot. And I, I love that he's uh, been a key player to this team for the last, you know, seven years. But he's passed it. At right back and centre back. It's time for Lustig to step aside. Um, and I love him. I love the guy. And I agree with you completely on that second part. Absolutely. But um, it's time to be, you know, looking at other options. And I don't think moving him to centre-half would be a smart manoeuvre. Considering we've now got Benkovic, Boyata and Ayer, who are three better players uh, in that position. He's probably more suited for a centre-half. Yes, that is probably the quick answer to that. Would I play him at centre-half? No, I would just look for a replacement and move Lustig to that sort of backup role. I wouldn't want to see him leave the club. But um, backup is probably more suited for him at this stage of his career. Sam Clark asked, despite being a former Rangers player, should we try and get Kelly from Livingston? I think he's a brilliant young keeper. There's no denying he's a brilliant keeper. He's showed that consistently throughout the season and showed that against Celtic at the weekend. He's a fantastic goalkeeper and he's always an option that we should maybe and, cons and, and consider looking into uh, if we ever need to bring in another goalkeeper to the club. Uh, I wouldn't personally complain about bringing him in. I think he's a good keeper. I think he's a strong keeper. I really do think um, that he would be a great addition. Whether or not we need him at this present moment in time is a different discussion. I don't think we do, um, which is why I don't think we would make a move for him. But he's always someone to keep under the radar, I suppose. And I think the fact he's a former Rangers player shouldn't come into consideration. Um, we shouldn't really bother about it at the end of the day. There are players who played for Celtic and Rangers in their youth days and such and have went on the other way. Um, plenty of examples of that. Uh, I would happily see him move to Celtic um, if the opportunity was you know, right, it was the right time for it to happen, I would take him in. And finally, the last question of the episode comes from Brody, who asks, should we go back in for Roberts if he returns to Manchester City in January? And how many players would you be happy with to sign in January? If Roberts does return to Manchester City, I know his chances at Girona have been few and far between. 
If he does head back to City, I would not mind at all at us looking back into him and bringing him back to Celtic, whether that be on a loan or a permanent transfer. I think he's a magical player uh, with a lot of talent and would definitely add to the attacking uh, force that we are trying to establish here in the last few weeks. He would add to that and I would love to see him come back. I was a big fan of the guy and I was sad to see him leave Celtic. So if he was up for it, I'd more than happily take him back into Celtic. He's not going to get his chance at City. I don't see why he would not back a chance to play for Celtic permanently for at least a while till he makes that move back to England, which will happen. Um, but I would happily, happily bring him back to Celtic if the chance presented itself. Realistically, I don't think the chance will present itself. And I don't see him coming back to Celtic. Um, but how many players would I be happy with in January? You know, I'd happily see us bring in another striker just for depth reasons. Um, especially with Edouard and Griffiths having those fitness issues now and then. I'd happily see a striker come in, a right back as I mentioned, and really just maybe another general player for the squad, for squad depth, especially if we proceed into the last 32 of the Europa League, it would be more than helpful, whether that be defensively or offensively. Um, I would like to see us maybe bring in two or three players. I think that is a decent amount to suggest uh, for the January window. That does it in for this episode, lads. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Lads and ladies, I should say, I've been put up about that before. I just, you know, the demographic is majority male, let's be honest. Uh, but anyway, like and subscribe if you have enjoyed. Let me know your opinions to my opinions. And make sure to follow the Twitter as well. Uh, and I'll see you all next time.